there, this is Sherry Hayes with MomDelights.com and we've been talking about how to have an excellent education for cheap or free. Stay tuned, we're going to talk specifically about some important books and where to find your books and maybe what to do with the books you find. So stay tuned. We've made our list with some things we're interested in, some things we have, some things we're interested in maybe, and now we're going to talk about where to find those things. Now I talked about that one list where she has an, a both like old-fashioned education and also that one list where she had the links to where you could find the free things. And um, I just want to talk to you about some strategies to build your library because I know a lot of us we, we might have a few of these good things, but we don't have a lot of these good things. And um, so I'm going to talk to you about some sources, some resources, and some ideas that, some things that I use. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is free books. There are two main sources for me, and there's a way to combine both, I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, one of them is Google Books. Google Books, if you do the right search and you click on free books only, you will get books that are in the public domain that you can download and print out or you can read them through the Google Play app on your phone. If you have Android or um, Apple, they have a Google Books app. You can read it right on your phone. And um, that has been an amazing resource for me over the over like the last 10, 12 years or so, maybe longer. Um, this right here is, so, so when you do that, you can read it off your phone or you can print it out and bind it and give it to your kids. Now this is, I have an, uh, a tutorial on my blog showing, and I think I have one on my channel, how I go about printing and binding my own books. And um, this right here is one that I've done. This is Up From Slavery, Booker T. Washington. I got this off of Google Books. So Google, oh no I didn't. I got this off Gutenberg. Gutenberg is another one of those. Gutenberg, the Gutenberg, Proje the Gutenberg Project has lists and lists and lists of public domain books that have been digitalized. And they're a great resource. This Up From Slavery was from there and I went to Rosegate Harbor, I'll put the link below, and I learned how to format this book from the Gutenberg um, formatting into a book that is readable. And so as you can see, it reads just like a regular book. And um, I printed this out and I have a long arm stapler, so I stapled it in, in books of 20 pages, I think. Yep, it's like, it's like five pages, but it's 20 printed pages. And then I used um, a hot glue gun and I and I hot glued the, gunned the ends of them together. So this is like a perfect binding idea that has hot glue all along here. And then I took a file folder and I glued that onto there. And then I printed out, I used a Microsoft Publisher and I printed out covers and spines and then I glued those on and then I put some contact paper on it. So the, the end result is this is a book that feels and reads just like a regular book. And here's another example. This is um, George MacDonald, The Light Princess, and other story, other fairy stories. And we love George MacDonald's The Light Princess and other ones that he's written. And so, um, yeah, well, this one is well-loved, as you can see. <laughs> um, this is a favorite. So this reads just like another book. And I, I have others. I have a whole bunch of others that I could show you that I've done. I've got... Um, readers and I've got math books. I've got all kinds of stuff that I did this way. You can get pretty colors um, for your covers and lots of people they don't go to this this extent. They just write it on the front you know what the book is and there are all different ways you can do this pretty cheaply. You can take and print out the books and you can put them just three hole punch them and put them in a binder and they can read them. Very easy. I also have books that I took and I printed out and I did it eight and a half by eleven, but I I put I punched it. You know I I think I did like I usually do like five hole punches, and then you use dental floss, and you sew you kind of go round and round inside of each of the holes to bind it together, right? And then you um, put a cover on each side, and then you put some uh, like uh, duct tape, 
like you can get colorful duct tape on there and then you've got a book. Uh, I don't have one right here to show you but they're pretty simple to do and you just use cardstock. You just print something on cardstock for the covers and you can put some contact paper on there to make it you know more um, to last a little longer and then you or you can use um, one of these file folders and you can just put it on there and cut it to size and there are all kinds of different ways to do that. The other way that you can take advantage of these books for free is to um, buy a Kindle and then you can use um, Mobi files. It's M-O-B-I and um, they have those. Gutenberg has Mobi files and so does Heritage History. Heritage History is a one of, another one of those places where you can find all kinds of history books and for, for free. It's all free, all free and I'll put the link below for that. So um, those are some sources for free books. You don't have to have a library card. Now there are sources for all kinds of other there are sources for all kinds of other free things that you can um, print out that you can use as resources for your kids along with this. Um, and I'll just have to do another video on that because there's so much. I've been gathering lots and lots lately. But anyway, so there are some sources for that. Now, we're also going to talk about buying physical books. And right now, we're still dealing with the aftermath of the COVID-19 scare. And so I think some of us might be more limited than others. Where I live, um, the library isn't open yet, but used bookstores and thrift stores are still open. And that's a great source, especially for classics, because classic books are the ones that have been printed and printed and printed and printed. So there's always some laying around someplace in some thrift store. So, you know, lots of times, like if you get a paperback, one of those is like 25 to 50 cents and a hardback might be a dollar. So that's an easy way to take some of your money and go and stock up on the classics, the ones that are printed often. Also, another source for that, if you, in your area they are having garage sales, maybe the thrift stores aren't open, but people are that's out in the open air, you know, it's not really very possible that anyone could, could transmit anything, and so they might be, you might be able to have garage sales in your area. That's another great great place to look for books. And what you do is, since we made the lists last time, you take your list, take the things that you wish you had, then go to your thrift store, go to the garage sale, and look for stuff on your list. Or if you find some books, see if it's on your list, you know, because sometimes you don't want to buy something that, like that. It'll be a nondescript cover and it'll be have a title and go, is this any good? I don't know. So if you have your list with you, you can look it up and tell, well, is this something that's really going to be good for my family? So those are just the classics on these, but I'm going to turn you on to something that is so terrific. Now I'm going to, I'm going to um, suggest something to you. And that is that what we think of as educational materials, as we talked about last time, is usually either fluff or boring. But there is a whole industry that has been built around the idea of making information available and interesting. And that is the nonfiction book industry in the United States, and it's been around forever. And everywhere you go, you're going to find nonfiction books that are marketed to children and adults that are going to be so interesting. It's going to be like eating candy steak. <laughs> it's going to be that total nutrition bar, but it's going to taste so good. Let me show you one example of something that I found at a, um, a library book sale. Let me show you. This book, which I've recovered to protect it, and also because the the original cover, I don't know, it wasn't that interesting. So, and it also looks better in my library if they're, you know, all the old books have the same paper. Um, this is the ABCs of Nature. This was this was produced by Reader's Digest many many years ago. It's called, see, you can see, Reader's Digest, ABCs of Nature, a family answer book. So it's a reference book. It really is. But you'd be surprised how much your kids will want to sit and read it. In fact, this was done in 1984. And this book right here, if you can see, it starts with the Earth and with the solar system. And it gives lots of information. And it talks about the atmosphere, it talks about geology, all those things about Earth science that we're supposed to teach kids. But it doesn't make them think like it's a school subject. It's about just learning about fun things that are interesting. Yeah, 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 I know, it's amazing. So this is the type of learning I was talking about. That these kind of books, 
that were produced by the nonfiction industry in the United States, or if you live in a different country, I'm sure they have some in your country. What you do is you have them laying around, and accidentally your kids might pick them up and start reading them, and then you'll dis they'll all disappear, and you'll have to go search for them because they've been reading them to them to themselves at night before they go to bed, or you know just different ways. So these are amazing, and this is kind of a really lazy way to teach your kids, <laughs> but it's excellent. But you can also assign things to them with these books. So gathering these at your garage sales, your thrift stores, so amazing. Okay, then uh, here's here's some modern stuff that has been done. This book is pretty much everywhere. It's been in print for a while, so you can find used copies on Amazon. You can find this. eBay is an amazing place to find books. I have ordered lots of books off of eBay. Or Amazon. Amazon, when they have their used portions, they have a lot of thrift stores around the nation that sell their books on Amazon. And you go to the used part, I'm sure you already know this, but if you don't, um, this is the way things work. Ah, yes, very fascinating. How the helicopter works, right? These are the kind of books that kids should be using. But instead, they get the boring thing at school where they say, here are the elements of blah, 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 blah. Now, read this section and answer the questions. You know, I hate that. Don't you hate that? I hate that. When I was in school, you know what I used to do with that? I, would, I wouldn't even bother reading the chapter. I'd go to the questions and I'd use the index and I'd look up the answers and I would never even read. Ah, I did that a lot. Uh, I really got high grades too. Scored high on tests, but I don't remember anything they taught me. <laughs> that is not well, the way my kids are taught. Okay, so let me show you some other things. And this is something called We Had Everything But Money. This is produced by Crescent Books. I don't know if you know them. So We Had Everything But Money is about the Great Depression. Yeah, a historical era, and they have other ones that are like this. And um, it has pictures from the era, and it has personal stories of how they lived during those times, and then gives some different information of how it was, what it was like during those times, and the different things that happened, and the, and all of the different culture that happened around. And this is like the CCC made men out of many young enrollers, or enrollees, sorry. <laughs> and um, yeah, so this is this is a fascinating way to do a period of history. And uh, I got to tell you something, and I'm gonna I'm gonna give this to you, and it's gonna really rattle your brain a little bit, but it's gonna set you free. Did you know that you don't have to give history to your children in a sequential order? Did you know that you can give a you can have your kids enjoy different periods of history or different stories from history or different events or different people from different historical eras? And that your kids are able, very capable, very, very, you can, you'll be amazed actually. They can put it all together in their own timeline in their brain. I know that because I've done that before. Haven't you done that before? I mean, our kids are not st as stupid as we make them out to be. They can do that. They can handle it. You don't have to have them. Okay, now, children, this person lived in this part of our, and now, so we're going to have to study all about only this era all together. I mean, I've done that before, but my kids, like, you know, at a certain point, you can only put cram so much about a certain area in their brains at once, right? They get bored. They get tired of it. You may go over it for a little bit, but then let it go. And let them, just let them enjoy the information they have at hand, and they'll put it all together themselves. Now, you can talk in general about this, this, and this happened, but they'll, oh, yeah, I remember, and then this happened, and they'll freak you out because they know more than you do. <laughs> because they have been reading. Remember, reading, 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 writing, writing, writing. Okay, so there's, there's an idea. Just get books like this. Books that are part of our nonfiction indus book industry. Okay, now, um, here's some other ones. This book right here is like one of my favorites ever published. It's King Alfred's English by Lori White, and she is an English teacher now, but she was a homeschool mom, and she makes the history of English lang English language so amazing, so interesting. And she talks about the history of the King James Bible, and it's just, oh man, you're going to love this book. And she has um, free resources on her website, theshorterword.com, and free printables and all links to movies and all kinds of stuff. 
You'll love it. This is this is a thin little book. It doesn't take very long to read, but if you can start like your if you start like a 12 year old and you have them read this before they do anything uh, grammar or language arts, they're going to go, oh, I get it. And you're going to have a much more enthused um, child. And her writing is interesting, too. This is not fluff and it's not bore. It is interesting. It is a nutritional bar. This is what I'm talking about. If you give person a person a steak or a nutritional bar, this is one. And it doesn't cost very much either, which is great. This is what this is like a vitamin shot. <laughs> so this I would suggest that you really need this book. Anyway, if you're an English speaker or if you're not an English speaker and you're just interested, and English is your second language, you want to know where it came from, right? And why the whole world speaks it. She'll tell you. So that's another book. So here I'm going to show you some other stuff. This right here is another Reader's Digest book, or it's kind of a multimedia book. It had originally, and this is something else in here, <laughs> but um, it, it includes uh, CDs and some of ours are missing because they've been well loved over the years and now we just use a YouTube playlist. But this goes to 700 years of classical treasures. This is not a school text. You won't find it, I don't believe, in any homeschool list. But you will find it all over the place on the internet, I do believe, and this is an amazing resource. Now they have others like this, so you need to look for this. You need to dig a little bit. But it goes through the different periods of classical music from medieval through modern. And it explains and it shows it talks about the different composers and it has in here my daughter is composing by the way. She's compiling lists of YouTube um music, uh, a playlist. She's compiling uh YouTube playlists for all these titles. And um I'll try to link that below what she's done so far. And so um, then what you can do is you can just live, have your child read a section, right? They can read a section on, let's see, this one is um, the Romantic era. And so they can read through the different composers and what, what it was about, and then have them listen to the music, right? Which is an amazing way to learn about classical music. And this is not a textbook, dearies. This is not a filled with fluff and bore. This is meat, okay? This is what you need to look for. Okay. So here is another idea. I'm hesitant to turn you on to vintage uh, kids series because they all get taken up. But anyway, <laughs> but you know, it used to be that, I don't know, they do have some equivalence to this. If you can find some equivalents, then put it in the link below because I've been looking and I found a few like uh, D DK Dorling Kindersley does some stuff that's kind of like a mishmash of a whole bunch of different ideas together that kids would love. But what I'm talking about here is you need to have collections of literature and poetry and interesting things that kids like all together in a mishmash in a volume that kids could just sit and they could just like feast on it. And then if you can do that and then just have them write every day about something they're interested in, man, I tell you what, their education will soar far and beyond anything they get in public school that they're bored and they hate, okay? And this is one of those series. This is the Golden Treasury of Knowledge, okay? And what this is, if you can see, there's a list here of all the things included, and I will read some of the things. Apes and Monkeys, Buddha and Buddhism, Beavers, Vasco da Gama, uh, Bridges, Gold, Thomas Alva Edison, Parasitic Plants, Pioneers of the West, Primitive Man's Food, The Solar System, The Roman Army, Evergreen Trees, Russia, The Ass, The Viking Warriors, Clouds, Egyptian Writing, Mahatma Gandhi, Underground in Water, Leonardo da Vinci, The Middle Ages, Pakistan, The Civilization of Crete, Frogs, Rhodesia, The Growth of Weapons, Muscles, Edible Seeds, Owls, Owls, Night Hunters. So that's in this one light. Look how thin it is. So let me show you the inside. You're going to make Look at that. Look at that color. Now, I know you're going to say, Sherry, you said no fluff, but this is not fluff. These are diagrams. These are interesting things that explain the text, okay? And it's pretty. It's pretty to the eye, but it's not fluff pretty. It's not um, just illustration to make it make the, make the yuck nicer. This is the actual part of the information. And, um, oh, it's just, these are amazing books. So, we're taking one of these of uh, the older. They're taking one of these a week, 
and they're reading it and then they find something they want to like learn more about or they were enthused by and then they write an essay on it every day and yeah that's curriculum but don't we don't call it curriculum do we do we want that nasty word attached to really good learning i don't know <laughs> so there are other series that i take advantage of too so i have some other ones here that i want to show you this is the golden book history of the united states this is amazing. There's some artwork here that is amazing. Um, here's one. During the late 1790s, the British and the French menaced American ships at sea. So that's, that's a really beautiful picture there. This is not fluff, guys. This is not candy. This is Victory at Fallen Timbers. And this has got a map here that goes along with the text. These are written like a, like a really long story. Um, they're not boring. They're meat. And kids love them. Kids love to read these, by the way. And um, that's a whole set. This is, this is number four. This is just one example. There were many of these produced like in the 50s and 60s, and they're really good. I think there must be some equivalents that are more modern, if you know of some, or you can... Uh, you know, get, put it in a comment below so that we can all take advantage of it. But these you can find still. Here's something there are a lot of, I think, online still. This is My Book House. And this has a little bit of history, a little bit of, a lot of fairy tales, and a lot of really good fables and different things. And it's got poetry. It's got a lot of different things. This is written or compiled and written by, um, someone by the name of and, and you can uh, by the way these are also most of these you can find in the public domain and you can print out yourself yeah that's what's really good about these ones because you really don't you really don't have to like compile a whole bunch of different things uh like a different like an anthology of poetry an anthology of fables or fairy tales if you just use this set of books and you get it for free it's called my book house um, I will put links below because you can get this. Um, uh, one of the res resources that I didn't mention before is um, Internet Archive. If you go to Internet Archive and you look for books, um, they have everything on there that's in the public domain. And they get it from all different sources. And they show you, they have like the, a list on the right hand side. When you scroll down, it'll show you all the different sources of places that you can get anything in public domain for free. So it's a great resource. It includes Google Books on there and all kinds of stuff. So uh, I'll, I'll put the link below. That's um, Internet Archive. So anyway, so this is a great set. And it goes from the nursery all the way through. And then it has like some more modern ones in the, in the printed version. Um, it even has like sports heroes and stuff like that. So this is a great way to get your kids reading some really media. It's interesting and the illustrations are amazing. Um, and, uh, I mean, the drawings are just lovely, lovely drawings. Here's something I believe that is, um, so this is Paul Bunyan. And, uh, so it's, it's really interesting, a tall tale there. And there's all kinds of stuff like that in here. And it's a set, I think there are nine books or 10 books in this set. So that's one. Here's another one that I love and I'm using it with my little girl. It's called the bookshelf for boys and girls. And it has, I believe this one has nine volumes. And this one, um, it has uh, like, um, goes from the nursery all the way through. And it just has the, it has excerpts from classic books, but it also has like um, famous stories and people and, 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 and um, stories and songs from many lands. It has everything pretty much an elementary child would need to know to have all the meat of all the classics and different things they need would be in here. Of course, I'm adding things to this, but I mean, I have nine volumes. <laughs> the little thing doesn't know what's coming, <laughs> but it's these are amazing books. You could you could build a whole curriculum on these, and there's even a science and nature one. But um, I don't necessarily use that totally because you know some of it's outdated and some I don't really agree with. But but we are going to be doing some other science and nature. I've got all kind. Oh, I'm gonna have to do another video. You know that I'm just gonna have to stop here and do another video because. I'm just gonna get crazy. Let me just show you this one more vintage set that you can find pretty readily. And then we will go to other things. I'll show you some more about what we're using and then it'll get me talking and then I'll be able to share more and more with you. Uh, do you have all the time for this? Anyway, wait. so this is Childcraft 
child craft was very popular back in the day. And this one, oh, I picked a really bad one. This is you and your family. Let me go get the better one, just a minute. So when my kids were little, a friend of mine gave a set of these in a basket. And she said, we're moving and we just, I, these, my kids never use these. So that's all I had. <laughs> so this is a great boon to me. But look at these pictures. Aren't they lovely? These are old favorites for little kids and poems and different things they would like. And then it goes on and it has uh, history stories. This is really good for young children. And I've got to tell you that my kids love these, and I love these books so much that we absolutely wore them out. And they were falling to pieces, so I had to get a new set. And then my, my, the next set of children loved them. Um, and I've used them. Look at, look at these illustrations. And there's so much in these books. We loved these books to death, like I said. So um, those are great 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 collections I, I there are some modern equivalent equivalents I'm on I'm videoing honey there are some modern equivalents I think they're like treasuries and stuff like that I think Usborne probably has some equivalents um, and so you just got to look around but you need some things that gather all this stuff together there's also uh, yesterday's classics has a lot of older stuff that they've reprinted that is really great and um, there's the Baldwin Project, and there's like Gutenberg and all those different things where you can find these collections. You can find beautiful stuff like this, and you can print them out. Now, sometimes you have to do the black and white. I know it kind of takes away the, from the color, but um, but you can get a modern collection, and they do a lot of that. So that's what. But I've got to stop. I've got to stop. I've still got more to share. So stay tuned for another video at another time and we'll try to delve more deeply even into what we're using to give you even more ideas and more resources that you can use. So you have a wonderful day. Like and subscribe. Bye bye.